So as you can tell, uh, I'm not in the kitchen and I'm not a chef, but I do have a, a stove that hasn't been taken to the dump yet from a previous project. And you could do parkerizing over uh, propane. You can do it on like a little plug in the wall burner thing. Um, you just got to make sure that whatever you're um, using, it's you know got a controllable heat and uh, it's got enough power to heat a big pot of water up to you know boiling or close to boiling. So it's just a clapped out old stove off of Craigslist and uh, follow the cord. Did a little uh, OSHA approved wiring job there. A couple wire nuts. I suppose if that freaks you out, uh, I wouldn't do it. It's safe. And it plugs into there. It's a 220 plug. So here I got the solution on the stove. The first step, um, if you were using a new solution, of course I'd tell you to read the instructions, but um, I can assume that they're going to tell you that it needs to be seasoned. That's sort of like a standard thing for a new parkerizing solution. So how do you season it? Well, you uh, put it in your stainless steel pot of choice and uh, bring it to about like 150. Let's see where we're at right here. That's 148. Uh, so I think the operating temperature, this is about, it's under 200 degrees. So to season the mixture, you want to have it about 150 or so. Uh, definitely under the operating temperature. So to season it, you can see, oh, toxic fog, sorry. Um, you can see right there, that's the steel wool that's been uh, made sure that it's degreased in acetone. And uh, steel wool's nice because it dissolves easily and the acids in there are gonna eat away at the steel wool. And I'll leave it in there for like 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, that's gonna put some iron so into the mixture. This solution actually isn't uh, completely brand new. I've used it a couple times before, but uh, I had some other parkerizing solution left over that I'd never used, but I mixed up. So I combined them and I wanted to uh, season it just for a little bit because um, I added all the new stuff in there. So um, once you get start using the solution, um, it sort of self seasons with the uh, with the iron that you're uh, actually parkerizing. So. All right. The steel wool's been in there for probably, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. So I think that's about good. Uh, I suppose if you're doing some new solution, maybe follow the instructions, but I'm just gonna go with my uh, instinct on this one. So I'm gonna pull it out now and uh, the next step will be getting the uh, parts ready. So my experience with parkerizing is, you know, doing uh, home gunsmithing and um, yeah, I've done some barrels and uh, other miscellaneous steel parts. So I'm just using a, a crappy cheap tailor typing of candy thermometer or something. Got it on Amazon. Um, I actually got the first one I got was like a glass candy thermometer. Same people that made it. It wasn't digital. And uh, what do you think happened? First thing, right off the bat, boom! Broke that thing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I got this digital one now and it hasn't broken yet, but um, you'll notice, uh, maybe we'll be able to see it once we get it up to temp a little bit more, but you can see that the stuff is real nasty looking. It's got lots of like floaters and smuts in it. And uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what it is, but it, it settles out to the bottom and every once in a while I like to uh, give it like a stir and I just use the end of the thermometer and uh, if you're going to do that, just make sure uh, to hold on to the bottom because this thing pops off and then the all the electronics and stuff fall into your pot of uh, solution. Yeah, that's me how I know. Hot tip! So before you parkerize your parts, you want to make sure that the surface is prepared 
uh, properly. Uh, a, it needs to be grease and oil free. If you got any oil or grease or anything on it, um, it inhibits the, uh, the process from working. So uh, on gun stuff, I normally do like 120 grit aluminum oxide. Um, it seems to give like a little more, uh, like a toothier finish, um, but I'm not set up for aluminum oxide right now. I got uh, only glass beads and I found that glass beads tend to uh, sort of peen the surface and make it like more smooth opposed to actually cut it like aluminum oxide does. Um, but I think it'll be fine for this and uh, so we'll see. Uh, so yeah. Glass cabinet, glass beads, it's sort of an all-purpose thing. It's, you know, every annual shit gets thrown in there. So um, it's definitely not like an ideal, like refinishing centric kind of setup, but we're a do-it-all kind of place. So I wanted to mention uh, if you were going to use glass or this might be a, a con to glass, uh, especially for like aluminum and stuff, but uh, it seems to embed into the surface, so that's not good for, you know, welding, anything like that, painting. Um, so you need to make sure that it's, you know, free of any embedded glass particles or dust or anything, and that's easy. You just, you know, break parts cleaner, and, you know, a rag or wash it off, whatever. Um, so what I'll do is hose them off with water and then uh, give them a rinse with acetone, and the next step will uh, be parkerizing. All right, I just uh, put all the parts in the bucket and uh, went and hosed it all out to try to get the majority of the sand. And uh, then I uh, filled the bucket up with acetone. Liberal amount of acetone. Whoa, hope I didn't get any on the camera. Probably won't bode well for the plastic. Um, actually, so yeah, degrease acetone. And you can see I got a little uh, fan set up here. I'm by no means a you know safety Nazi, but uh, you know this the fumes that uh, come off of this once you get it up to temp uh, could, could could be considered caustic, I guess. And the fumes uh, actually do like permanent lung damage if you're like sitting there huffing them or you know trying to get some like free facial from the steam coming off the pot. Uh, don't do that. So yeah, it's no big deal. Just do it uh, where you got some cross breeze, i.e. fan, and you'll be all right. You can also see on the uh, other burner there, I got another pot and that's just full of water. Um, some of Safeway's finest distilled water. I'm sure you could use regular water, some people do. Another thing about uh, the water, um, the water use, or I'm going to use to preheat the parts. So uh, it's not super important on smaller things, but I have noticed uh, parkerizing other like frames and slides that have a uh, like more iron and mass to them. When you throw them into the the solution, it's like a big heat sink and pulls all the temperature out of the solution. So it's nice to uh, stage your parts in a pot of water that's the same temperature as the solution. So when you put them in there, they get right to work. Preheating water is starting to warm up. Uh, so the parts that are sitting in acetone, I'm going to start loading them into there. And for the smaller, smaller parts, it's nice for when you're, you know, moving them from the preheat to the park and pulling them out of the park. You can even park in this uh, for little screws and whatnot. Dip it right in there looking proper. So I got the parts in the uh, preheat. Let's see if I can get a little of this up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gloves. We're at a glove stage. No more uh, fingerprints. So I've had the uh, the park rising solution sort of resting while I've been doing this and uh, I think I'm going to start thinking about bringing that up to the working temperature of about 185, 190. If you get it too hot, you can actually like kill the solution. So 
definitely stay below 200. I like to stay around, like I said, 180, 185, 190. Uh, creep up on it though, because it happens faster than you think. And that smuts that I talked about earlier that sort of floats around in there, um, I found that that sort of goes away after you use the solution more and filter it. But that stuff can settle to the bottom like you can see right there. And it can sort of build like a crust and cook onto the bottom and uh, give you sort of like a false temperature. So keep, uh, keep an eye on that too. So there's a couple ways that you can uh, put the parts into the solution. Um, I'm going to go about it with some degreased iron wire, some baling wire. Uh, if you're smart or plan ahead, unlike me, you can uh, do that before you put it in the water, but this is sort of a low-key operation, so I'll figure it out as I go, and you'll see how it works or how it doesn't. Typically, you don't want uh, the parts to sit in the bottom of the pot. You want them to sort of be floating in the solution. Uh, how I use the, uh, the little strainer, uh, put the little screws and stuff, that sits on the bottom, but I just sort of, you know, give it a toss every once in a while and it seems to work. Um, and I'm gonna try that with some some of the bigger pieces too, but you can see uh, those plates right there are the top and bottom drawbar pieces. And I'll probably try to get a little piece of wire through there just because they're so big and have a tendency for that whole flat thing to lay on the bottom of a pan probably wouldn't be good. So, so you could see I put the draw bar in. There's all the schmutz in there. You can see, ba bow, blizzak. And I'll talk about it as we see a couple more things in here. But um, I know what some of these steels are. I don't know what the others are. But I know from past experiences, uh, the parkerizing, it's. You know, it depends the, on what kind of metal, base metal it is. Um, some things take it quicker and darker than others. Harder, no more carbon, that seems to make a big difference. Um, also, if you got any uh, mill scale on it. So, I'll show you on this draw bar. You can see it's starting to sort of creep up the shaft, the darkness, but not as much because I only blasted sort of the head of the, uh, the draw bar where you would put so, the... People say, you know, when the part is done sizzling, uh, that's when you can pull it out, you know, seven, 10 minutes, um, somewhere around there. I mean, you'll, you'll know when you leave it in too long because you'll pull the part out and it'll just look all like sort of eroded and really rough and not a nice even uh, texture. And I think that's from when it's like, you're basically it's no longer parking, it's just like the acid is eating away at your your part. So keep an eye on it. Some things just won't get as black as others. So I'm gonna call this guy about done. You can see it's beautiful, it's just jet black. And uh, all I gotta do now is uh, just go throw it in the sink with some cold water and uh, let it All sit. Right, we're gonna try some of the uh, some of these smaller pieces in the strainer. We're starting to get up to temperature. Um, when I was doing the draw bar, uh, it was solution wasn't up to temp all the way but the part was so hot that um, I just threw it in anyways it's funny you can actually do this without a stove or you know a heat source like that you can do it in the microwave and you just take the solution and put it in a Pyrex cup and get it boiling and it stays hot enough for you know 15 20 minutes it only takes seven eight, nine, 10 minutes to park something. So you can just heat it up in the microwave, dunk your parts, easy peasy. So I'd be curious to see how these guys turn out because these are some of the, the things that probably won't park for some reason. I didn't prep 
some of them just because they're so small and I didn't want to spend the time to try to hold on to them and glass beat them so I just degreased them and chucked them in but things like there might be a washer in here that is looks a little suspect like it might be made out of some sort of like screw stock like 12L14 some sort of leaded easy turning but that stuff doesn't like to park at all or weld but interesting you can start to see wow they're getting nice and black I'm actually pretty surprised there's uh everything seems to be taking the color you can see right here it's got sort of a speckle pattern that's the uh this was made from a piece of key stock and that speckle pattern is the mill scale that wasn't completely removed so if that's important to you you gotta get rid of it because it just it's like got more carbon in it or it won't park or it takes park differently than the other materials so it uh, it'll just look real sort of splotchy plotchy but that's what that's what you get man might be more important on a gun but on a machine this is more just like a utilitarian uh, you know easy way to um, you know essentially paint items that would sort of be a pain in the ass to paint so plus it's fun you know something different it's sort of like a manly cooking show i guess so yeah these parts have been in there i think they're gonna get about as black as they're gonna be you can see looks nice this is that key stock part you can see it just doesn't take it where the uh mill scale is mill scale gone nice and black mill scale speckly so all right we're uh, starting to get to a temperature where things start happening and uh, where are we at one 170 so we're close to 180 and this is the fun part i guess so you can see this <whistles> looking proper that is a piece of 4140 um, I know that parks that's like a common gun steel um, so it takes park well this part granted it's not been in there as long this is just call it a mild steel I guess um, wow it's actually looking surprisingly dark so yeah it just goes to show who knows I'm gonna get a little roll here I got a piece of the, I think it's, yeah, that's the bottom part of the clampy jobber for the drawbar. That guy just went in and this guy has been in there. It's done. Ready for the sink. I'm happy with how that one turned out. That's just a regular old piece of hot rolled mild steel. All right, these parts are, parts are about done. I wanted to see if I could show you. People talk about, uh, you know, like, how do you know when it's done? Uh, we talk when it's said, oh, when it stops sizzling. And you can see the water is a little murky, but um, I would call this one done sizzling. Like, when the, uh, when the solution's working away on the material, like, you can see, like, vigorous bubbles just pouring off the surface. And um, that doesn't appear to be the case here, so I'm going to call it done. You can see the sort of the funny pattern on there. That's from not holding it up off the bottom. That'll probably show up. Uh, but once you put the oil and stuff on there, it sort of blends in and it's not a big deal. Um, so we'll take both of these parts into the uh, bathroom and I'll show you what I'm doing for, you know, my rinse. All right. Let's see if I could move and hold the camera. Uh oh, I'm caught on something. Oh. Whoa. A little dark. It's gonna get brighter. Ta da! So, yeah, this is just uh, the sink in the bathroom. And. I just got it plugged. 
with some cold water and you can see that the parts when they come out of the solution they're sort of like gray and they got sort of a crust on them and you can just take a toothbrush and that stuff comes right off and it leaves you like the final finish and yeah not bad pull the wire off I'll grab this other thing so That's a fingerprint right there. Same with that. That's when I was uh, grabbing it out of the hot water. There must be some oil or something. Um, but yeah, if you handle the stuff properly, you can get a really nice, even, even finish. So here are all the parts <clears throat> after, uh, after I washed them off, scrubbed them off with a toothbrush and then just took them outside and blew them off with the uh, air nozzle. They have a sort of a, a flat matte black. It's got a little scuzz on it. You can see. Anyways, so all of this stuff is dry right now. Now you need to add oil to it. So that's the next step. You can see I found this thing. I forgot about it uh, at the bottom of the pot. And this is what I would call overdone. You can see how this drawbar has got like a nice sort of rich black. This thing has gone past that and now it's like sort of going in reverse and starting to sort of speckle and remove the parkerizing and sort of just pit the material. So yeah, too long I would say. So all that is left to do is to apply your favorite lubricant. Um, we'll do this since everyone seems to have it. So uh, yeah, you just uh, hose, the sh hose it off and you can see, let's see if I can show you on camera without getting it all over the camera. You can see that it, uh, it just, it like sucks in. It's got some capillary action and that's the uh, porous structure of the park rising soaking in the oil so you can use you know oil bow shield wd-40 you know silicone stuff um, i've used on my pistols i use a, a grease i actually like rub grease into the park rising and then wipe it off and uh, that works very nicely it does not rust at all so i'll uh, i'll hose these off and um then you just wipe them up with a rag so let's do that so much i mean it might be a little bit more work than uh you know spray painting but you know it's impossible to get runs doing those no runs and we're ready for action as soon as we're out of the water you can put them right into uh into service <laughs> 